Hi guys, a uh, new video today. Um, today we're going to look at, at the backy shower construction. So we're going to build ourselves a DIY bespoke backy shower uh, as a little project for us over the winter. If you haven't seen already, I did a video on the, the technical aspects of the shower. So I, I looked at um, all the principles behind it, why it was built, designed, who designed it, um, what he was replicating with it, how it works, um, all the benefits from it. Uh, and, and the things that you need to, to do in your own shower at home in order for it to work as a shower and not just be a kind of a trickle tower. So what I suggest is you watch that video first if you haven't already seen it because a lot of what I'm going to say today won't make sense if you haven't seen that. So please do watch that. I will put a link at the end of that video to bring you back to this one after you've seen it. So if you go here, watch that video, I'll see you in a, in a while. Okay, we'll crack on. So what we're going to do in this video then, I hope to get the design of our showers at home uh, nailed down today. So each one will be bespoke. There isn't a kind of one shower fits all because we've all got different systems, different flows particularly, different setups. They will in theory be slightly different and I say in theory because we'll, we'll come up with a design that is absolutely perfect for your particular system then when we come on to as i found purchasing the the, the trays and things for the tiers uh, you're kind of limited really to what's available um, and there may be compromises to make but we'll we'll come on to that the first thing really is to get the absolute optimum design down for your system so from the first video remember uh, the three big things we need the flow is key the dimensions and the geometry of the shower trays uh, and the media. Today we're going to look at the flows and the dimensions and the geometry of the trays and then in the next video we'll, we'll go on to the construction and, and, and the media. So firstly flow. What you need to know really about a shower is the more flow you put over it the better. Within reason obviously you don't want to be. There will come a point when it's spilling out the sides and you're losing water etc but in theory the principle is such that the more flow you put over it the better so when i talk about the baseline shower system that we're going to compare and we're going to design ours around it, it it's the original momotaro stainless steel shower and it was designed for 3000 gallons an hour plus uh, the key being the plus we'll, we'll talk about the 3000 gallons an hour but worth just keep in mind that where we need to compromise and there will be compromises along the way. I mean, we're not spending £2,000 on a stainless steel shower system with bacteria, house media, uh, etc. So, so this project really, it's a series of compromises. But it's knowing when we need to compromise, it's making the right compromises in the right way. So keep in mind, when I talk about the flow over your shower, it's kind of a nominal figure. But if you can put a bit more over, it's better. So if you need to compromise where flow is concerned, then more is better. So have a look at your system, whatever you've got running at home. I've got a, a, a pod on this system, so it flows 5,500 litres an hour. What I want you to do really then is to, to go away and think about and work out what is the maximum flow that you can realistically put over a shower. And that's the number we're going to use to, to design your shower. My pod is gravity fed so I have a pumped return of five and a half thousand litres at one area where I could get more flow I could turn up the the pump it's a very very flow pump I could turn up the flow or I could add a bigger pump again compromises this means sacrificing some filter performance to get a bit more flow have a think about it have a look at it look into it I am not I personally have decided I won't increase the flow through my pod I'm not going to sacrifice performance of of the easy pod to get a bit more flow but in your system that might not always be the case so have a look at it it may be that you increase the flow through your filter you only lose a little bit but the, what you gain by the extra flow of the shower makes up for it so that's an area you can get some more flow i'm not going to do that another area is if you pump fed you can simply add another pump and drop another pump in your pond Keep it off the bottom if you can to minimise the muck that it pulls through. Personally, I'm not too worried about throwing muck and fish waste over a shower. Uh, as long as you've got the geometry right, it will handle it within reason. 
leaves and things not so much I'd, you know if you if you you want to keep leaves and stuff out of there so maybe sit the pump high up in the water and um, fit a strainer on it or some, something like that um, but that's another way you can increase the flow to your shower another way is you could fit a skimmer or use a skimmer line to pull some flow you could take fit a takeoff point at somewhere mid or high level water in your pond takeoff point straight to a pump straight to a shower you can combine the two a filter uh, a filter return and a shower uh, and a skimmer return so combine the two to give you more flow another way if you bottom drain fed uh, gravity fed you can where, where the vertical line comes out of the ground into your filter if you cut out and put a T in that line before the filter and the T comes off straight to a pump that's another way of, of getting water flow to a shower so lots of things you can do to increase the flow but look at your system now determine the most the maximum flow you can put over the shower and that is your figure for the purposes of this I'm going gonna to stick to at the moment what I've got which is five and a half thousand litres so just over a little over a thousand gallons so effectively a third of the three thousand gallons recommended for a backy shower so obviously therein lies a problem which we'll we'll address now once you've got that figure in terms of designing our shower to suit your flow we're going to use the, the Mamatar or stainless steel original shower as our baseline now the dimensions of the original shower are one meter wide 1000 millimeters wide 1100 millimeters tall so if you divide that up it gives you around 275 millimeters height per tier always four tier we, we want four tiers so that that that's a key figure 275 millimeters height per tier uh, and the 400 millimeters deep front to back and again a key figure because that that all determines when the water sprays out the spray bar it, it, it all determines surface area your media surface area which, which is key so they're the baseline dimensions now basically where we where we can compromise firstly the depth of the shower the 400 mil depth uh, is a critical dimension so we need to keep that so our shower will be 400 millimeters deep where possible we, we need to keep that figure secondly the height and again from the first video you'll remember that the um, the height of the tiers is probably the single most critical dimension in the tray so we need the water to accelerate between trays and smash into the media below so that height is critical so again fixed we're not going to change that the one that we can change and we will change is the width so the original shower as I say is a meter wide and basically as long as we keep the, the depth and the height the same we can just ratio that width to suit our flow so for example one meter wide three thousand gallons if you are putting one thousand five hundred gallons over that's the most flow you can you can come uh, come up with then that's half the three thousand gallons so we half the thousand uh, and our shower will be 500 mil half a meter wide 275 tier height maintained 400 mil depth maintained and again if 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 you if like me you put in just over a thousand over um then that's just over a third of the width so really i'm looking at about 350 400 millimeters wide um 400 millimeters deep so it actually becomes square keeping the 275 so using that original shower and the dimensions as a baseline keeping the depth fixed keeping the height fixed you need to factor the width accordingly to your flow so whatever you need to do to 3000 gallons to get your flow you need to do to the width to get your width and they're, they're the ideal dimensions for the, uh, the for your shower now in terms of constructing it plastic welding is possible I will talk briefly about that in the next video if you go down that route then obviously you can you can match those dimensions that you've come up with exactly uh, and your shower can be absolutely spot on correct size for your application if not if you're going to buy off the shelf trays 
then you're going to probably need to compromise, to be honest. It's highly unlikely that you're going to find exactly the right trays for your size. Now, one particular type of tray that I have researched and found to be absolutely ideal is called a Euro container. So this is a standard size container that um, you can buy all over Europe and they all they all stack so you can buy a tray in France or Spain or over here in the UK or wherever a Euro container and they will come together and they'll, they'll all they'll all work together so a really good versatile system polypropylene so a good good material uh, for this application now the problem with them is they, they come in a limited number of sizes firstly the, the, the main one um, I found is 600 millimeters wide 40 400 millimeters deep 270 high so pretty much bang on and this those trays are ideal for showers of six 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 and a half thousand liters upwards to say fifteen thousand liters that kind of range that is the perfect tray size for the shower we need you remember I'm only talking about five and a half thousand liters so I'm smaller and this is where the, where the problems come in there is a 400 millimeter wide euro container which, which is which, which is pretty much ideal for me but it's only 300 millimeters deep then um, still got the 270 but it's only 300 millimeters deep so there is a compromise there now I've decided I'm going to make I'm going to accept that compromise I'm going to actually make my shower out of the 400 by 300 by 270 deep um, euro containers um, as you gather it's a very small shower that great less you know easier to conceal or, or whatever it is you you want to do with it but this is the thing now if if you built a shower and it was seven eight hundred or a thousand millimeters wide and you then put five and a half thousand liters over it you're wasting your time you're going to get trickle tower at best you aren't going to get a lot out of it if anything to be honest with you and that's why this shower is so small we're concentrating the water we're still getting the velocity of water the acceleration the crashing against the media that we've got on the bigger scale but on a smaller scale so we've compromised kind of the volume that it is it is filtering per hour but we haven't compromised the performance and i don't know if i mentioned but a biggie for me is is nitrate the more i look into nitrate it, it, the more i'm convinced that it's absolutely vital for koi growth um, it, it is known nitrate does suppress appetite and suppress growth but i i think i think that that inf impact is much more than we all kind of give it credit for i think nitrate is absolutely vital for your koi's well-being and growth and um, if we get this shower right the the biggest thing for me there's a lot of benefits from huge aeration and this kind of invigoration of the water this kind of de deodorizing of the water the removal of some night uh, some ammonia without it having to pass through the, the, the nitrogen cycle it's gassed off obviously massive biological filtration but for me personally the nitrate is a huge uh, a huge thing i want to get that right and we've got to get these dimensions in this media right in order to get that nitrate uh, nitrate removal so yeah that that's a real biggie for me now in terms of where i got my uh, trays from you'll remember there's a, a quite a delay in this now the first place i ordered from they actually didn't turn up i went through loads of hassle um, i ordered them from somewhere else they subsequently have turned up so i've now got way too many uh, i'll probably do a, a giveaway or something at the end with it with a shower but basically I, I got them in the end from a company called solent plastics in the uk now they were absolutely excellent i must admit um, a little strange in that you kind of put on the website what you want and it, it's not a, a a purchasing system on the website you put it in they then give you a ring and tell you the price and delivery and stuff uh, but absolutely great service got them no problem now these are the trays that i got from them um, i've actually got black ones uh, i don't know if you can see those there's gray ones as well but i, I know the colors but these are the trays so you'll recognize these handles on the side cold euro containers 
these are absolutely perfect this is 600 by 400 by 270 now you'll notice on that one the bottom is flat I actually got four trays and two of them are flat like that but two of them actually look like this on the bottom now this is absolutely perfect so it, if you can get hold of these these are brilliant because um, basically all, what, all you need to do is put a put a big drill through each of these and you've you've you're done basically this is this is strong um, it'll support the media absolutely perfect so if you can if you can specify that you want these with this particular sort of hexagonal strengthened bottom um, even better failing that if you can't get those then I've sourced some trays now I got these from a company called eco filtration products that's the, the little flyer there and basically these are, are grids like this these these are 400 by 300 so um, so two of these side by side will fit perfectly in the bottom of that tray so I'll, I'll cut the bottom out leaving a lip around the edge to hold the tray and that'll sit on and that'll that'll hold the media in place now if as I say if you can get the trays with those hexagonal bottoms you won't even need these they're absolutely perfect if not something like this from eco filtration products is ideal for the for the bottom of the shower to hold the media and allow the water through that's where I'm at these containers as I say they do stack um, so they're all compatible with each other um, I'll just turn the camera around there you can see two of them stacked on top of each other um, you kind of click and locate in absolutely perfect for what we need but as I said they, they do they are limited with the dimensions so you may need to look depending what size you come up with you may need to have a look for something else but if you if you can use the either of the two sizes that I've I've said the um, perf these are perfect and as I said with the compromise if you do need to compromise if it's not exactly right go for the smaller shower because essentially a smaller shower with the same volume of water is the same effect as having more volume of water so uh, always err on the small side when it comes to the the width of the shower keep the depth the same keep the width the same uh you know keep the depth the height and the depth the same okay so I, i'm going to start to to build these now using these trays and and these grids um start to put it together obviously i'll film that along the way i will get cracking as well on the media i need to do a lot of research into the media this is this one is the one that will make or break it to be honest this is the biggie so yeah have a look at your systems get the absolute most you can possibly get in terms of flow do what what you need to do to maximize that come up with that maximum figure use that figure to design uh, your shower dimensions if you can find the trays elsewhere put, please put a comment uh, may help someone else um, with it. tell us where you get them from get those trays ordered get the grids ordered if you need the grids and then I'll get the next video out soon where we can start to put it all together thank you for watching as always please if you haven't already do subscribe it it really does help if you like the video give me a thumbs up and do check out my channel and uh, check out the other videos on there and i will see you shortly